Hello and welcome to our talk on common ENT presentations that you're going to be seeing when you're on call. Today we're going to be discussing cutotitis media. So uh, when assessing patients that present with uh, titus media, things that you're going to need are your otoscope with speculum, a pen torch and a tongue depressor. Things to know about titus media is that it's more common in children and they often have a proceeding for respiratory tract infection. And these patients present with symptoms of ear pain, uh, tinnitus. In young children, they can be pulling at the affected ear and they may be complaining of some hearing loss, often describing it as feeling muffled. They may have crying and uh, if they're more unwell, then uh, they may be suffering from fever as well. In patients with acute suppurative titus media, then they may be having a discharge from the ear and they may have complained that they have felt a pop as well. You want to be sure to examine both ears. Both ears may be infected, however, you'll also want to examine whether there's any difference between the two of them. You want to be looking at for signs of a red bulging tympanic membrane, any signs of any discharge if there's any perforation, and you want to be looking for a fluid level behind the tympanic membrane. If you examine the oral cavity as well, look for any signs of redness or inflammation that may uh, indicate uh, an upper respiratory tract infection. And you want to just make sure as well that they've got full and normal cranial nerves and especially the facial nerve. So you want to make sure that they've got full movement in the facial muscles uh, bilaterally. And you also want to make sure to examine the mastoid bones bilaterally just to rule out whether there's any mastoiditis progressing. So as we can see here, we've got a comparison between a normal tympanic membrane and an, and an infected tympanic membrane in a patient with a titus media you can see that it's bulging it's lost that reflection and it's uh, looking quite red and angry as well and you may get some patients as well with a fluid level or purulent discharge in the ear canal red flags in patients with a titus media are any signs of posterior swelling or protrusion of the ear you want to look for, out for any signs of meningism of the child's especially uh, irritable be sure to assess, especially in young, non-communicative children, any limitation of any neck movement, any signs of photophobia, which is why you need your pen torch, and um, take history from the parents whether there's been any seizures. You also want to look out for any signs of severe headache that's not improved despite the paracetamol, and you want to look for any signs of diplopia or double vision or uh, deteriorating vision. Any patients that are persistently vomiting or systemically unwell, any signs of any cranial nerve involvement, and if there's any uh, state of consciousness. If they've got severe retroorbital pain and their uh, hemodynamic can be unstable or if there's any sepsis, you want to look out for if there's a child with unsteady gait or balance issues and if they've got any uh, new limb weakness or change in hand preference. And again, if there's any pain behind the ear. If they have any of these red flag signs, then it's best to err on the side of caution and admit these patients, discuss with your registrar. You can classify patients with titus media into mild, moderate or severe. In patients that are mild, they're systemically well. Uh, they may have a fever, but generally they're hemodynamically stable. Uh, moderate, they're systemically unwell uh, with fever and persisting tachycardia and tachypnea. I would consider ad admitting these patients. And in severe otitis media, they'll show any of the uh, aforementioned red flags. Definitely admit these patients and discuss with your registrar. For any sort of further investigations, it depends on how severe the infection is. In mild patients, no investigations are required. But in moderate uh, to severe uh, infections, then you'll want to order bloods, including cultures. You want to take an ear swab as well if there's any discharge. In patients with severe titus media, then you'll want to order a contrast CT of the petrous bones to rule out any uh, mastoiditis. If there's any uh, intracranial complications, then you can either order a CT venogram of contrast or an MRI of the brain. In managing these patients, it again depends on the severity. So in, mild, in mildly infected patients, you'll want to give them simple analgesia and uh, topical antibiotics. This is usually uh, Silodex or Sofrodex. You want to make sure that you safety net the parents and uh, advise them to keep the air dry as well. 
in more moderate to severe patients, then you'll need to make sure that they're fully resuscitated, control the pain, and discuss with your senior for review. And you want to start them on an intravenous antibiotics according to trust guidelines. If there's any red flags, as we mentioned, you want to involve your senior early. Again, if you're unsure, um, discuss with the registrar. Useful resources on this include ENT SHO and ENT UK. And I'd also recommend reading the Oxford Handbook of uh, ENT and Head and Neck Surgery as well. All right. Thank you, everyone. That's our talk on uh, Atitis Media.